Jadwiga, Poland. Jadwiga, also known as Hedwig, 1373 fourths, July 17, 1399, was the first female monarch of the Kingdom of Poland, reigning from October 16, 1384 until her death. She was the youngest daughter of Louis the Great, King of Hungary and Poland, and his wife Elizabeth of Bosnia. Jadwiga was a member of the Capetian House of Anjou, but she had more close forebears among the Polish Piasts. In 1997 she was canonized by the Roman Catholic Church. In 1375 it was planned that she would eventually marry William of Austria, and she lived in Vienna from 1378 to 1380. Jadwiga's father is thought to have regarded her and William as his favored successors in Hungary after the 1379 death of her eldest sister, Catherine, since the Polish nobility had that same year pledged their homage to Louis' second daughter, Mary, and Mary's fiancé. Sigismund of Luxembourg. However, Louis died, and in 1382, at her mother's insistence, Mary was crowned King of Hungary. Sigismund of Luxembourg tried to take control of Poland, but the Polish nobility countered that they would be obedient to a daughter of King Louis only if settled in Poland. Queen Elizabeth then chose Edwiga to reign there, but did not send her to Krakow to be crowned. During the interregnum, Siena IV, Duke of Masovia, became a candidate for the Polish throne. The nobility of Greater Poland favored him and proposed that he marry Jadwiga. However, Lesser Poland's nobility opposed him and persuaded Queen Elizabeth to send Jadwiga to Poland. Jadwiga was crowned king in Poland's capital, Krakow, on October 16, 1384. Her coronation either reflected the Polish nobility's opposition to her intended husband, William, becoming king without further negotiation, or simply emphasized her status as queen regnant. With her mother's consent, Jadwiga's advisors opened negotiations with Jagela, Grand Duke of Lithuania, who was still a pagan, concerning his potential marriage to Jadwiga. Jagela signed the Union of Pruo, pledging to convert to Roman Catholicism and to promote his pagan subjects' conversion. Meanwhile William hastened to Krakow, hoping to marry his childhood fiancée Jadwiga, but in late August 1385 the Polish nobles expelled him. Jagela, who took the baptismal name Władysław, married Jadwiga on February 15, 1386. Legend says that she had agreed to marrying him only after lengthy prayer, seeking divine inspiration. Jagela, now in Polish styled Władysław Jagiello, was crowned King of Poland on March 4, 1386. As Jadwiga's co ruler, Jagiello worked closely with his wife. After rebellious nobles of the Kingdom of Hungary, Croatia had imprisoned her mother and sister, she marched into the Kingdom of Galicia Volhynia, which had been under Hungarian rule and persuaded most of the inhabitants to become subjects of the Polish crown. She mediated between her husband's Korolinkin, and between Poland and the Teutonic Knights. After her sister Mary died in 1395, Jadwiga and Jagiello laid claim to Hungary against the widowed Sigismund of Luxembourg, but the Hungarian lords failed to support them. Jadwiga was born in Buda, the capital of the Kingdom of Hungary. She was the third and youngest daughter of Louis I, King of Hungary and Poland, and his second wife. Elizabeth of Bosnia. Both her grandmothers were Polish princesses, connecting her to the native Piast dynasty of Poland. Historian Oskar Halicki concluded that Jadwiga's genealogical tree clearly shows that she had more Polish blood than any other. She was probably born between October 3, 1373, and February 18, 1374. She was named after her distant ancestor, Saint Hedwig of Silesia, who was especially venerated in the Hungarian royal court at the time of her birth. King Louis, who had not fathered any sons, wanted to ensure his daughter's right to inherit his realms. Therefore, European royals regarded his three daughters as especially attractive brides. Leopold III, Duke of Austria, proposed his eldest son, William, to Jadwiga already on August 18, 1374. The envoys of the Polish nobles acknowledged that one of Louis's daughters would succeed him in Poland after he confirmed and extended their liberties and the privilege of Kozice on September 17, 1374. They took an oath of loyalty to Catherine on Louis's demand. Louis agreed to give Jadwiga in marriage to William of Austria on March 4, 1375. The children's sponsalia de futuro, or provisional marriage, was celebrated at Hainburg on June 15, 1378. The ceremony established the legal framework for the consummation of the marriage without any further ecclesiastical act as soon as they both reached the age of maturity. Duke Leopold agreed that Jadwiga would only receive Treviso, a town which was to be conquered from the Republic of Venice, as dowry from her father. After the ceremony, 
Jadwiga stayed in Austria for almost two years, she mainly lived in Vienna. Catherine died in late 1378. Louis persuaded the most influential Polish lords to swear an oath of loyalty to her younger sister, Mary, in September 1379. She was betrothed to Sigismund of Luxembourg, a great grandson of Casimir the Great, who had been Louis's predecessor on the Polish throne. The promised marriage of Jadwiga and William was confirmed at their father's meeting in Zolayim, now Svolen in Slovakia. On February 12, 1380, Hungarian lords also approved the document, implying that Jadwiga and William were regarded as her father's successors in Hungary. A delegation of the Polish lords and clergy paid formal homage to Sigismund of Luxembourg as their future king on July 25, 1382. The Poles believed that Louis planned also to persuade the Hungarian lords and prelates to accept Jadwiga and William of Austria as his heirs in Hungary. However, he died on September 11, 1382. Jadwiga was present at her father's deathbed. Jadwiga's sister, Mary, was crowned king of Hungary five days after their father's death. With the ceremony, their ambitious mother secured the right to govern Hungary on her 12-year-old daughter's behalf instead of Mary's fiancé, Sigismund. Sigismund could not be present at Mary's coronation, because Louis had sent him to Polanto crush a rebellion. After he learned of Louis's death, he adopted the title Lord of the Kingdom of Poland demanding oaths of loyalty from the towns in Lesser Poland. On 25 November, the nobles of Greater Poland assembled at Radomsko and decided to obey nobody but the daughter of the late king as she would settle in Poland. On their initiative, the noblemen of Lesser Poland passed a similar agreement in Wyslica on 12 December. Queen Elizabeth sent her envoys to the assembled lords and forbade them to swear an oath of loyalty to anyone other than one of her daughters thus invalidating the oath of loyalty that the Polish nobleman had sworn to Sigismund in the late King Louis' demand. Both Elizabeth's daughters had been engaged to foreign princes, Sigismund and William, respectively, unpopular in Poland. Polish lords who were opposed to a foreign monarch regarded the members of the Piast dynasty as possible candidates to the Polish throne. Queen Elizabeth's uncle Władysław the White had already attempted to seize Poland during Louis' reign. However, he had taken monastic vows and settled in the Benedictine Abbey in Dijon in Burgundy. Anti-Pope Clement VII, whom King Louis had refused to recognize against Pope Urban VI, released Władysław from his vows, but he did not leave his monastery. Meanwhile, Siemowit IV, Duke of Masovia, appeared as a more ambitious candidate. He was especially popular among the nobility and townspeople of Greater Poland. Queen Elizabeth's representatives released the Poles from their oath of fidelity that their representatives had sworn to marry at an assembly in Sirads in February 1383. The envoys also announced that she was willing to send Jadwiga to be crowned instead, on condition that she returned to Buda after her coronation to live there until Hartwell's birthday. The Polish lords accepted the proposal, but they soon realized that thereby the interregnum would be extended by a further three years. At a new meeting in Sirads, most noblemen were ready to elect Siemowit of Masovia king on 28 March. They proposed that Siemowit should marry Jadwiga. A member of the influential Teksinski family, Jan, convinced them to postpone Siemowit's election. The noblemen agreed to wait for Jadwiga until 10 May, stipulating that she was to live in Poland after her coronation. They also demanded that Dobritsyn and Mukow, two fiefdoms which her father had granted to Vladislaus II of Opole, and Ruthenia, that had passed to Hungary in accordance with a previous treaty, be restored to the Polish crown. Meanwhile, Jan Teksinski and his allies, including Sibsiwoj Paluka, seem to have started negotiations with Jagela, Grand Duke of Lithuania. Siemowit supporters, however, tried to enter Krakow in the retinue of Bodzanta, Archbishop of Gniezna, in May but the townspeople closed the gates of the city before their arrival. Jadwiga had not arrived in Poland by the stipulated date, 10th of May. Her mother's envoys stated that the spring floods had hindered Jadwiga's progress over the Carpathian Mountains. Sienowit of Mazovia took up arms and advanced as far as Kalish. His supporters assembled in Sirads in August in order to elect him king, but Archbishop Bodzanta refused to perform his coronation. In a meeting in Kasa, Queen Elizabeth promised the delegates of the Polish provinces to send Jadwiga to Poland before November. The Queen Mother and the Poles also agreed that if either Jadwiga or Mary died childless, her kingdom would pass to her surviving sister. Siemowit having laid siege to Kalish, Queen Elizabeth sent Sigismund of Luxembourg at the head of an improvised army to Lesser Poland. Siemowit failed to take Kalish, but news about the appalling behavior of Sigismund's soldiers increased Sigismund's unpopularity in Poland. Sibsiwoj Paluka, 
who was the castellan of Kalish and starist of Krakow, led a delegation to Zadar and Dalmatia to negotiate with Queen Elizabeth, but she had him imprisoned instead. She sent Hungarian soldiers to Poland to garrison them in Bavel Castle in Krakow, but Paluk escaped and successfully obstructed her soldiers entering the castle. At a general assembly in Radomsko in early March, the delegates of all the Polish provinces and towns decided to elect Siemowy king, if Jadwiga did not come to Poland within two months. They set up a provisional government, stipulating that only the community of lords and citizens had the authority to administer Poland during the interregnum. Queen Elizabeth, who was only informed of the decision by an informal message, realized that she could not any longer postpone Jadwiga's coronation and so sent her to Poland. The exact date of Jadwiga's arrival is unknown. Because the main source for the history of Poland during this period Jan of Zarnkow's chronicle ended prior to this event. The interregnum that followed Louis's death and caused such internal strife came to an end with Jadwiga's arrival in Poland. A large crowd of clerics, noblemen, and burghers gathered at Krakow to greet her with a display of affection, according to the 15th century Polish historian, Jan de Lugas. Nobody protested when Archbishop Bodzanta crowned her on October 16, 1384. According to traditional scholarly consensus, Jadwiga was crowned king. Thereby, as Robert W. Knoll proposes, the Polish lords prevented her eventual spouse from adopting the same title without their consent. Stephen C. Rowell, who says that sources that contradict the traditional view outnumber those verifying it, suggests that sporadic contemporaneous references to Jadwiga's king only reflect that she was not a queen consort, but a queen regnant. Bonsanta, Archbishop of Gniezna, Jan Radlica, Bishop of Krakow, Dobrogost of Novi Dvor, Bishop of Poznan, and Duke Vladislaus II of Opale were Jadwiga's most trusted advisors during the first years of her reign. According to a widely accepted scholarly theory, Jadwiga, who was still a minor, was a mere tool to her advisors. However, Halicki refutes this view, contending that Jadwiga matured quickly and her personality, especially her charm and kindness only served to strengthen her position. Already in late 1384 she intervened on Duke Vladislaus's behalf to reconcile him with her mother's favorite, Nicholas Igarai. The Polish lords did not want to accept Jadwiga's 14-year-old fiancé, William of Habsburg, as their sovereign. They thought that the inexperienced William and his Austrian kinsmen could not safeguard Poland's interests against its powerful neighbors, especially the Luxembourgs which controlled Bohemia and Brandenburg and had a strong claim on Hungary. According to Halicki, the lords of Lesser Poland were the first to suggest that Jadwiga should marry the pagan Duke Jagela of Lithuania. Jagela sent his envoys including his brother, Skurgela, and a German burgher from Riga, Hunnel to Krakow to request Jadwiga's hand in January 1385. Jadwiga refused to answer, stating only that her mother would decide. Jagela's two envoys left for Hungary and met Queen Elizabeth. She informed them that she would allow whatever was advantageous to Poland and insisted that her daughter and the prelates and nobles of the kingdom had to doubt what they considered would benefit Christianity and their kingdom, according to Jandalugas's chronicle. The nobles from Krakow, Sandomierz, and Greater Poland assembled in Krakow in June or July, and the majority of the more sensible voted for the acceptance of Jagela's marriage proposal. In the meantime, William's father, Leopold III hurried to Buda in late July 1385, demanding the consummation of the marriage between William and Jadwiga before 16 August. Queen Elizabeth confirmed the previous agreements about the marriage, ordering Vladislaus II of Opale to make preparations for the ceremony. According to canon law, Jadwiga's marriage sacrament could only be completed before her twelfth birthday if the competent prelate testified her precocious maturity. Demetrius, Archbishop of Estergom, issued the necessary document. William went to Krakow in the first half of August, but his entry to Vavel Castle was barred. De Lucas states that Jadwiga and William would only be able to meet in the nearby Franciscan convent. Contemporary or nearly contemporaneous records of the completion of the marriage between William and Jadwiga are contradictory and unclear. The official accounts of the municipal authorities of Krakow record that on August 23, 1385, an amnesty was granted to the prisoners in the city jail on the occasion of celebration of the Queen's marriage. On the other hand, a contemporary Austrian chronicle, the Continuatio Kloster Nierbuski states that the Poles had tried to murder William before he consummated the marriage. In the next century, De Lugos states that William was removed in a shameful and offensive manner and driven from the castle after he entered the Queen's bedchamber, but the same chronicler also mentions that Edviga was well aware that many people knew she had for a fortnight shared her bed with Duke William and that there had been physical consummation.
Britain. On the night when William entered the Queen's bedchamber, a group of Polish noblemen broke into the castle, forcing William to flee. According to Delugastad after this humiliation, Delugos continues, Yadviga decided to leave Wawel and join William, but the gate of the castle was locked. She called for an axe and, tried, to break it open, but Dimitra of Goraj convinced her to return to the castle. Oscar Halicki says that Delugas's narrative cannot be dismissed as a romantic legend, Robert I. Frost writes that it is a tale, almost certainly apocryphal. There is no doubt, however, that William of Austria was forced to leave Poland. John Gala signed the Union of Kruo in August 1385, promising Queen Elizabeth's representatives and the Polish lords' envoys that he would convert to Catholicism, together with his pagan kinsmen and subjects, if Jadwiga married him. He also pledged to pay 200,000 florins to William of Habsburg in compensation. William never accepted it. Two days after the Union of Kruo, the Teutonic Knights invaded Lithuania. The Iltir Hotchmeister Chronic and other chronicles written in the Knights territory accused the Polish prelates and lords of forcing Jadwiga to accept Jagela's offer. According to a Polish legend, Jadwiga agreed to marry Jagela due to divine inspiration during her long prayers before a crucifix in Wawel Cathedral. Sienowit IV of Mazovia resigned his claim to Poland in December. The Polish lords' envoys informed Jagela that they would obey him if he married Jadwiga on January 11, 1386. Jagiela went to Lublin where a general assembly unanimously declared him king and lord of Poland in early February. Jagiela went on to Krakow where he was baptized, receiving the Christian name, Władysław, in Wawel Cathedral on 15 February. Three days later, 35-year-old Władysław Jagiela married 12-year-old Jadwiga. Władysław Jagiela styled himself as Dominus at Tutoreni Poloniae, lord and guardian of the Kingdom of Poland, in his first charter issued after the marriage. Archbishop Bodzanta crowned Władysław Jagiela king on March 4, 1386. Poland was transformed into a diarchy kingdom ruled over by two sovereigns. Jadwiga and her husband did not speak a common language, but they cooperated closely in their marriage. She accompanied him to Greater Poland to appease the local lords who were still hostile to him. The royal visit caused damage to the peasants who lived in the local prelates' domains, but Jadwiga persuaded her husband to compensate them, saying, We have. Indeed, returned the peasants' cattle, but who can repair their tears? According to Delugos's chronicle. A court record of her order to the judges in favor of a peasant also shows that she protected the poor. Pope Urban VI sent his legate, Mafiola Lampugnano, to Krakow to inquire about the marriage of the royal couple. Lampugnano did not voice any objections, but the Teutonic Knights started a propaganda campaign in favor of William of Habsburg. Queen Elizabeth pledged to assist Władysław Jagiela against his enemies on June 9, 1386, but Hungary had sunken into anarchy. A group of Slavonian lords captured and imprisoned Jadwiga's mother and sister on 25 July. The rebels murdered Queen Elizabeth in January 1387. A month later, Jadwiga marched at the head of Polish troops to Ruthenia, where all but one of the governors submitted to her without opposition. Duke Władysław of Opole, who also had a claim on Ruthenia, could not convince Wenceslas. King of the Romans, to intervene on his behalf. Jadwiga confirmed the privileges of the local inhabitants and promised that Ruthenia would never again be separated from the Polish crown. After the reinforcements that Władysław Jagiela sent from Lithuania arrived in August, Halis, the only fortress to resist, also surrendered. Władysław Jagiela also came to Ruthenia in September. Petru Muzat, voivode of Moldavia, Visited the royal couple and paid homage to them in Lviv on 26 September. Władysław Jagiela confirmed the privileges that Jadwiga had granted the Ruthenians in October. She also instructed her subjects to show the same respect for her husband as for herself. In a letter addressed to the burghers of Krakow in late 1387, she stated that her husband was their natural lord. On William's demand, Pope Urban VI initiated a new investigation about the marriage of Jadwiga and Władysław Jagiela. They sent Bishop Dobrogost of Poznan to Romito inform the Pope of the Christianization of Lithuania. In his letter to Bishop Dobrogost, Pope Urban jointly mentioned the royal couple in March 1388, which implied that he had already acknowledged the legality of their marriage. However, Niwis of Dale Weiss, who had been William of Habsburg's supporter, spread rumors about secret meetings between William and Jadwiga in the royal castle. Jadwiga took a solemn oath before Jan Taksinski stating that she had only had marital relations with Władysław Jagiela. After all witnesses confirmed her oath, 
Niwas of Dalewise confessed that he had lied. She did not take vengeance on him. Yadviga's brother in law, Sigismund, who had been crowned king of Hungary, started negotiations with the Teutonic Knights about partitioning Poland in early 1392. Yadviga met Mary in Stara Lubavna in May and returned to Krakow only in early July. She most probably accompanied her husband to Lithuania, according to Oskar Halicki, because she was far from Krakow till the end of August. On 4 August, Władysław Jagiela's cousin, Vitautis, who had earlier fled from Lithuania to the Teutonic Knights, paid homage to Władysław Jagiela near Lida in Lithuania on 4 August. Negotiations between Sigismund and the Grand Master of the Teutonic Knights, Konrad von Wallen Road, continued with the mediation of Vladislaus of Opoli. However, Hungary's southern border was exposed to Ottoman incursions, preventing Sigismund from taking military measures against Poland. Wallen Road died on July 25, 1393. His successor, Konrad von Jungingen, opened negotiations with the Poles. During the discussions, Pope Boniface IX's legate, John of Messina, supported the Poles. Yadviga was a skillful mediator, famed for her impartiality and intelligence. She went to Lithuania to reconcile her brother in law, Skurgela, with Vitatis in October 1393. Relations between Poland and Hungary remained tense. Sigismund invaded Moldavia forcing Stephen I of Moldavia to accept his suzerainty in 1394. Soon after the Hungarian troops left Moldavia, Stephen sent his envoys to Jadwiga and Jagiela, promising to assist Poland against Hungary, the Ottoman Empire and the Teutonic Knights. On May 17, 1395, Mary died after a writing accident. According to the 1383 agreement between their mother and the Polish lords, Jadwiga was her childless sister's heir in Hungary. Vlad I of Wallachia, a Hungarian vassal, issued an act of submission on 28 May, acknowledging Yudviga and her husband as Mary's legitimate successors. The widowed king's close supporter, Stibor of Stiborix, expelled Vlad from Wallachia. Władysław Jagiela gathered his troops on the Polish Hungarian border, but Eustache Jolsvai, Palatine of Hungary, and John Canisai, Archbishop of Estergom, stopped his invasion of Hungary. In September, Conrad von Jungingen told the prince electors of the Holy Roman Empire that the union of Poland, Lithuania and Hungary under Władysław Jagiela's rule would endanger Christendom. However, most of Sigismund's opponents, who were especially numerous in Croatia, supported the claim of Ladislaus of Naples, the last male member of the Capetian House of Anjou. On 8 September, the most influential Hungarian lords declared that they would not support any change in government while Sigismund was far from Hungary fighting against the Ottoman Turks. Before the end of the year, peace negotiations between the representatives of Hungary and Poland ended with an agreement. Jadwiga adopted the title heir to Hungary, but she and her husband took no further action against Sigismund. The relationship between Lithuania and the Teutonic Knights remained tense. Jadwiga and her Polish advisors invited the Grand Master, Konrad von Jungingen, to Poland to open new negotiations in June 1396. Conflicts with Vladislaus of Opole and Siemowit of Masovia who had not given up their claims to parts of Ruthenia and Kuyavia, also intensified. To demonstrate that the territories were under Jadwiga's direct control, Władysław Jagiela granted the Duchy of Bels, in Ruthenia, and Kuyavia to her in early 1397. However, Jadwiga and her Polish advisors wanted to avoid a war with the Teutonic Order. In response, Władysław Jagiela replaced most Polish staristas, aldermen, in Ruthenia with local Orthodox noblemen. According to German sources, Władysław Jagiela and Vitatis jointly asked Pope Boniface IX to sanction Vitatis' coronation as king of Lithuania and Ruthenia. Jadwiga and Jungingen met in Leklaek in the middle of June, but they did not reach a compromise. The Teutonic Order entrusted Władysław of Opole with the task of representing their claims to Dobritsyn against Jadwiga. Jadwiga and her husband met Sigismund of Hungary, who had returned there after his catastrophic defeat in the Battle of Nicopolis on 14th of July. They seem to have reached a compromise, because Sigismund offered to mediate between Poland, Lithuania and the Teutonic Knights. On Jadwiga's request, Wenceslas of Bohemia granted permission for the establishment of a college for Lithuanian students in Prague on July 20, 1397. Jadwiga, who had spent many sleepless nights thinking of this project, according to herself, issued a charter of establishment for the college on 10th of November. She opened new negotiations with the Teutonic Knights, 
but Konrad von Jungingen dispatched a simple knight to meet her in May 1398. Władysław Jagiela's cousin Vitautis also entered into negotiations with the Teutonic Knights because he wanted to unite Lithuania and Ruthenia under his rule and to receive a royal crown from the Holy See. According to the Chronicle of John of Basilge, who was an official of the Teutonic Order, Jadwiga sent a letter to Vitautis, reminding him to pay the annual tribute that Władysław Jagiela had granted her as dower. Offended by Jadwiga's demand, Vitautis sought the opinion of the Lithuanian and Ruthenian lords who refused Jadwiga's claim to a tribute. On October 12, 1398, he signed a peace treaty with the Teutonic Knights, without referring to Władysław Jagiela's right to confirm it. Oscar Halicki says that Pazilja's sensational story is either an invention based on gossip or a guess by the chronicler. Yadviga was childless for over a decade, which, according to chronicles written in the Teutonic lands, caused conflicts between her and her husband. She became pregnant in late 1398 or early 1399. Sigismund, king of Hungary, came to Krakow in early March to negotiate for a campaign to defend Wallachia against Ottoman Turks. Vitatis, in order to bolster his authority over the Rus principalities, decided to launch an expedition against Timur, who had subdued the Golden Horde. According to Jandalugas's chronicle, Jadwiga warned the Polish nobleman not to join Vitatis' campaign because it would end in failure. Halicki says that the great number of Polish knights who joined Vitatis's expedition proves that Delugas's report is not reliable. On the occasion of the expected birth to the royal couple, Jagela's cousin Vitatis, Grand Duke of Lithuania, sent expensive gifts, including a silver cradle, to the royal court on behalf of himself and his wife, Anna. The first horoscopes written for Jadwiga's and Jagela's child predicted a son in mid-September 1398. However, a girl was delivered on June 22, 1399 at Bavel Castle. Reports of the time stated that the child was born prematurely. According to the horoscope, she was actually born slightly late. However, a due date of 18th of June would rule out the suspicion of pregnancy as early as mid-September. The newborn princess was named Elizabeth Benefacia, after Yadviga's mother and Pope Boniface the Ninth, who, in a letter of May 5, 1399, had agreed to be godfather under the condition that the infant be called Boniface or Benefacia. She was baptized by Pyotr Y. Sradolinsky, Bishop of Krakow. However, the infant died after only three weeks, on July 13, 1399. Yadviga, too, was on her deathbed. Stanislav Skarbimirs expressed hope that she would survive, describing her as the spiritual mother of the poor, weak, and ill of Poland. She advised her husband to marry Anna of Sillai, Casimir the Great's granddaughter, and died on July 17, 1399, four days after her newborn daughter. Yadviga and her daughter were buried together in Bavel Cathedral, on August 24, 1399. As stipulated in the Queen's last will. On July 12, 1949, 550 years later, their tomb was opened, nothing remained of the child's soft cartilage. The following family tree illustrates Jadwiga's connection to her notable relatives. Kings of Poland are colored blue. Two leading historians, Oskar Halicki and S. Harrison Thompson, agree that Jadwiga was one of the greatest rulers of Poland, comparable to Boleslaw the Brave and Casimir the Great. Her marriage to Władysław Jagiela enabled the union of Poland and Lithuania, establishing a large state in East Central Europe. Jadwiga's decision to marry the elderly Władysław Jagiela instead of her beloved fiancé, William of Habsburg, has often been described as a sacrifice for her country in Polish historiography. Her biographers emphasize Jadwiga's efforts to preserve the peace with the Teutonic Order, which enabled Poland to make preparations for a decisive war against the Knights. Jadwiga's childless death weakened Władysław Jagiela's position, because his claim to Poland was based on their marriage. Six days after her funeral, Władysław Jagiela left Poland for Ruthenia, stating that he was to return to Lithuania after his wife's death. The Polish lords sent their envoys to Lviv to open negotiations with him. The delegates took new oaths of loyalty to him, confirming his position as king. On the lord's demand, he agreed to marry Anna of Sillai. Their wedding was celebrated on January 29, 1402. Jadwiga's cultural and charitable activities were of exceptional value. She established new hospitals, schools and churches, and restored older ones. Jadwiga promoted the use of vernacular and church services, especially the singing of hymns in Polish. The scriptures were translated into Polish on her order. Casimir the Great had already in 1364 established the University of Krakow, but it did not survive his death. 
Władysław Jagiela and Yudhika jointly asked Pope Boniface IX to sanction the establishment of a faculty of theology in Krakow. The Pope granted their request on January 11, 1397. Yudhika bought houses along a central street off Krakow for the university. However, the faculty was only set up a year after Yudhika's death. Władysław Jagiela issued the charter for the re-established university in July 26, 1400. In accordance with Yudhika's last will, the restoration of the university was partially financed through the sale of her jewelry. Oscar Halicki writes that Yadvika transmitted to the nations of East Central Europe the universal heritage of the Respublica Christiana, which in the West was then waning, but in East Central Europe started flourishing and blending with the pre-Renaissance world. She was closely related to the saintly 13th century princesses, venerated in Hungary and Poland, including Elizabeth of Hungary and her nieces, Kinga and Yolanda, and Salome of Poland. She was born to a family famed for its religious zeal. She attended Mass every day. In accordance with her family's tradition, Yadviga was especially devoted to the Blessed Virgin Mary. An inscription engraved on her request on a precious chalice, which was placed in the Wawel Cathedral, asked Our Lady to place Poland under her protection. Yadviga was venerated in Poland soon after her death. Stanislav Skarbimir states that she had been the most Christian queen in his sermon composed for her funeral. Paul of Zeder referred to the wax figures placed by her grave. Sermons written in the early 15th century emphasized that Yadviga had been a representative of traditional virtues of holy women, such as mercy and benevolence. Yadviga's contribution to the restoration of the University of Krakow was also mentioned by early 15th century scholars. Numerous legends about miracles were recounted to justify her sainthood. The two best known are those of Yadviga's cross and Yadviga's foot. Yadviga often prayed before a large black crucifix hanging in the North Isle of Wawel Cathedral. During one of these prayers, the Christ on the cross is said to have spoken to her. The crucifix, St. Yadviga's cross, is still there, with her relics beneath it. Because of this event, she is considered a medieval mystic. According to another legend, Yadviga took a piece of jewelry from her foot and gave it to a poor stonemason who had begged for her help. When the king left, he noticed her footprint in the plaster floor of his workplace, even though the plaster had already hardened before her visit. The supposed footprint, known as Yadviga's foot, can still be seen in one of Krakow's churches. In yet another legend, Yudvika was taking part in a Corpus Christi Day procession when a coppersmith's son drowned by falling into a river. Yudvika threw her mantle over the boy's body, and he regained life. On June 8, 1979, Pope John Paul II prayed at her sarcophagus, and the Congregation for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments officially affirmed her beatification on August 8, 1986. The Pope went on to canonize Yudvika in Krakow on June 8, 1997. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.